right in on it. All right. Let's draft it up. Pack one, pick one. Uh, psychotic Anarchist? I don't know. Maybe. Um, let's see here. I, mean, I do like him. Ritualist is pretty good. I'm not seeing really a lot of other great picks here. I guess I'll just start off with a Psychotic Anarchist. I'm not really committed anyways with it, so... Yeah, I'll just lead off with that and we'll see what happens. I mean, you could still play this guy in Humans. It's not a big deal. Helps me draw cards, I guess. And my opponent, though. You know, we'll see. Enter the song, a Wrathbringer. Okay, maybe I'll go Orcs. Maybe we'll try to go Orcs. Salt Zones get Rage 1. That seems pretty good. Yeah, let's try to do Orcs. Maybe some sort of Ruby Blood or just Ruby Orcs. That seems pretty good. Sure. It's pretty nice. That, that tells me Ruby's pretty open from the right side. I mean, or at least Orcs and Ruby are. Humans, of course, are very popular still. But um, that's a pretty good start. Warbringer and uh, Psychotic Anarchist for our first two picks. Might even just play Poke Power and just ram it on in there. It's going to be interesting playing this VIP. I think I'm going to play that tomorrow. So the next one's at 9, and I don't want to stay up till past midnight on it. That's a long time to stay up. Just kind of on a whim decided to do this, so maybe go with the Punisher. That seems pretty good here. As it Spearman is okay. Oh, Fierce Warlord's decent. If I had some one drops, I don't. I'm not really planning on drafting a lot of one drops. I think getting a lot of Dark Spire stuff is probably the play here. Brood Missionary seems to be okay, but probably not as good as Dark Spire Punisher. Not seen any removal yet either. Ooh, but there's the Fire Soul Wizard's really good too. Oh, that guy's good. Mm, let's just go Dark Spire. I guess I'll, I'll kind of go into the blood here a little bit. And it should be going on cost. There we go. Another Fierce Warlord. Um, another Dark Spire Punisher. That seems pretty good to me. Of course, a shard. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I guess we'll just stick with the Dark Spire Punishers. I mean, seems like it could be pretty good. Just need to, hopefully, we'll see some blood removal. Two Dark Spire Punishers right off the bat. That's always good. Well, there's a good way to show these. I want to show them stacked by cost. Hey, there we go. Snare Trapper. Ooh, there's those daisies. Everyone loves those daisies. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of choices here. We've got the Adrenaline Rush, which is a quick trick, but it doesn't stay. I like the Sly Huntress. She's a nice one. She gives me another body. Probably the Sly Huntress, just because she's um, giving me that extra body there. Seems pretty good. That seems like a decent pick here. Single Threshold makes it easier to cast, of course. Drone Cracker, uh, Control and Orc has, this has speed, so is that 3-3 for 4 with speed that keeps getting bigger? I guess that's pretty good. That seems okay. Sure, sure, why not? Brutal Bone Cracker, come and join our, our team. Going Orcs here, going some, some blood, blood Ruby Orcs. I'm kind of unsure which champion I'm going to be going with right now, though. It'll probably end up being Poco, but we'll see. Another Punisher, that's a decent pickup. I saw one guy that just kept dropping Punishers on me, and it did not feel good. Yeah, I'll go with the Punisher, sure. Be nice if I could maybe pick up something like, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Kaka Twice, that would be nice. But I'm not, not getting my hopes up on that one. Lots of punishing going on with this deck, though. Punishing the noobs. I 
discards a card at random, or put a Dark Spark card back into my hand, so that seems pretty good. The biggest problem is he's only a 2-2. Two -two. It'd be nice to get something to inspire him. The Ruby Inspire guy. Mm. Overtime Bot could just ping away. Yeah, if I get the Ruby combo card, I could Overtime Bot to just ping things forever. That seems pretty good. I am in Ruby. Although we do also have the we have this to help fix us. That seems pretty good. Yeah, actually, you know, I'm going to go with that. I mean, there's no guarantees. A lot of people are like, love having that overtime bot combo in Dwarves, so if I had the other part of the combo, then I would go with that guy. Another bone cracker. I guess I could be good. Sure. Why not? We'll get the bone cracker here. Shield bot. Eh. Troop can't block. It's a vanilla troop, but it's a 2.31. Two Seems like it might be okay for playing aggro. Um, I guess I get the burrow bunny. I don't especially like it because it's just so vanilla. It's like tunnel me, and you get. I mean, it's it's a nice it's nice because it's easier to cast, so it's actually like a two point card. But I don't know. It doesn't seem like it'd be that great. Maybe the shield bot here. Uh, wild, of course, is pretty well open. Shield bot. Yeah, I guess I'll pick up shield bot. I probably won't play it. Um, Shin hair is way open. People just don't like Shin hair. Uh, maybe this guy with sky card. That seems like a pretty trick of the light. Or shield bot is at least I can actually do something with that. Not that I probably will, but eh, there's a buffalo. Rotting buffalo. He's like the same as the uh, diamond one, except he costs one more. Ooh, there's Teapot. Everyone's talking about Teapot. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty sick card. A lot of people love this card. Again, I'm not seeing a lot for my deck, specifically. I mean, we've got the Cannon Volley, maybe. It's pretty good, but I'll take the Teapot, sure. Might have a lot of expensive stuff, so it could help out. It doesn't draw me cards, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's like a. You still have to draw the cards. I don't know. Like, a lot of people are loving on this teapot, but I don't know if I really am into it. I'll probably play it just to try it out because everyone's talking about it so much, but all it does is reduce costs of things. Okay, there's a cockatrice. I really like having that guy. We got a lot of Dark Spire Punishers already. I'll probably see it coming back around anyway. So, yeah, Cockatwice is just... It's much better if I was in Diamond, because I can... Uh, I can um, give it, like... It's already got Lethal, and I could give it Swift Strike, you know? But I'm sure I can figure out something to do with it here. In Ruby, maybe I'll get the Ruby, uh, Ruby Aura, which will give it Swift Strike. You know, I could do that. Lethal plus Swift Strike, and then I've got two other things. I can make it not blockable and, like, something else. I can make it not blockable by anything but Blood Troops, and there's going to be a lot of humans, so it should just be able to just trounce right through them and then give it, like, Rage 1 or something. Just a Kraken Guard Sea Priest, another Punisher. Tell us, and Gates play. It's probably the best card here, actually, the Brawler. I hate passing that Sea Priest, but I have to. That's really does not make me feel good at all. Passing that Sea Priest. Maybe I should just play with more Dark Spire. I'll probably see a ton of this guy, really. I mean, the Brawler, it ramps me. It can ramp me into my Cockatwice, so that seems pretty good. Don't have any humans, so the Rallying Banner doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, feeding the Young Ones is removal, but it's only two-point removal because I'm not really playing Shin here. Uh, 
uh, not really seeing a lot of choices here. Maybe take Ebony Pawn, but it's like a counter pick here. Probably counter pick the Town Crier. Town Crier is really good for that that humans player just to undercut him. Actually, probably Vanguard Egwene is probably the best card here for the humans player, so we're just going to undercut him a little bit there. I didn't really have a good pick there at all. Tormented Ritualist, on the other hand, is really amazing, but I'll probably see some more of those. I want another Cockatwice. That's pretty awesome to see another Cockatwice here. It almost makes me want to go Diamond now to uh, to give them Swift Strike and like Life Drain or something. Because I'm not really, really heavily in Ruby. I mean, I could go into Diamond here. I don't really have the greatest... I've got an Anarchist. I Actually, I think I might try to switch streams here and go Diamond. And This is in pack 2, so I haven't ever done something like this crazy before. But I think I, I really want to just because I want because of the way I want to gem the Cockatoice. And I've got two of them, so it should be worth it. I could try to go three different colors, but I don't... Or three different shards, but I don't know that that's going to be worth it. Oh, wow. Two Cockatoice, so that's pretty awesome. Um, Valkyrie Warlord... That's an orc. Should we control cost two or less gains? This can't be blocked by troops two or less. It seems okay if I had a lot of troops that are two or less, which I don't. Reactor bot, if I had some charge power things, which I don't. I'm kind of trying to come out of Ruby. Um, man, that's really bad. I guess I'll take the Warlord for now, but... That seems pretty bad for me. I mean, I guess he at least he only costs three. He's three for a three two, which is decent by itself. So let's see. I could take Immortal Tears for fixing here. I, I might need to do a lot of fixing in this deck. Dustwood Outriders decent. Ooh, there's a Nibbler. It comes a four. If something dies, it becomes a four four. When a troop dies, any troops, my troops, my opponent's troops. That seems decent. That's a decent body, and I can give it unblockable with Valkyrie Warlord? Sure. Why not? Why not? Uh, Killblade's decent. Another Punisher, of course, is those we see a lot. There we go. Born to Die. Sacrifice a troop, deal one damage. Eh. Gem Snatchers. No, I'm trying to come out of Ruby. So maybe go with... I guess I can go with the Punisher here. Just tons of Punisher. Just punishing my opponent. I've got a place of a Punisher in the deck now. It's a lot of Punisher. The biggest problem is he's just a 2 2 body. That's kind of like whatever. It's not the greatest. Hi, I'm Dark Star Punisher. I'm a 2 2 body. Really looking to snipe some diamond stuff though right now. This guy's good. Bury the top card opposing the champion. The game of health. Yeah. That's pretty good. This guy's kind of like he just bleeds your opponent and blocks decently well. Especially with the two cockatwices. And then if I can get some life gain, some diamond cards. Not a lot of great one drops here. Pack three is going to be interesting, that's for sure. And the Punisher came back around. Spirit House, sacrifice this. Revert target card. Steadfast on the end. I really don't want that. I might just go mono blood and just dip into diamond for the cockatoice. That's what I might do. Uh, Briar Patch, I guess. Recovery Specialist seems pretty bad for me. I can't deal with artifacts very well anyways. I'm in blood. Buffalo guy again. Ooh, but I've got... No, that's Diamond and Sapphire. Uh, maybe an Ebony Pond here. Yeah, Ebony Pond seems okay to have one of in your deck. Wretched Wrangler. Discard card. Create two Vow Hoppers. Put them in your hand. That seems pretty bad. Oh, that's not bad, though. Light of Hope? Yeah, sure. That's, that's my first diamond card to go into diamond now. Uh, I guess I'll take 
take this guy. I'm trying to get people out of diamond now on the pack three, but it's a little late. And I can't really do anything with that mirror magi. There he is, he went over here. Okay, he doesn't do anything for me. Hey, what's going on, Wing Nazgul? Pact of Life is my rare. That doesn't seem like that's going to work for me at all here. But Blood Aura, on the other hand, seems pretty amazing for me. That seems pretty good. Especially because I can give things, like, unblockable. Um, it's probably going to be Blood Aura here. Burn is decent, too. Impact of Life could put the wild player ahead, but how many wild players do you think are actually in this draft? Not that many. So yeah, it looks like Blood Aura. I think that's going to be the sickest thing. It's a, it's a trick, and it gives my guys life drain. I've got five Dark Spire Punishers in this deck. Five of them. Seems like a lot. Especially like Blood Aura on like Neophyte Zarlocks or something. Induction Coil. That could be good. Or Murder seems pretty good. That's probably our pick here. I also want this Ruby Aura, but I'll probably get one of those later. But I'm thinking Murder here. It's that nice answer everything removal. That's, that did well for us. Right now we're only in Diamond, so we can give our Cockatwice Swift Strike. Uh, if we play it at all, and we probably won't play Light of Hope. If we, uh, we probably won't play Light of Hope or a Luji Mirthikin, Mirthikin guy. I guess we got Sly Huntress in here too, but we're probably like Mono Blood basically. <laughs> Mono Blood dip in a diamond just so we can activate the Cockatwice gem. We got two of them. We'll probably give it Life Drain and uh, and Swift Strike. And then it's got Lethal on top of that. It's just a sick combination. Or, you, or actually, what we'll probably do is we'll probably go Swift Strike. I don't know. I like Swift Strike Life Drain, but um, we could also do Swift Strike and something else. Ooh, Infernal Professor lets us cast cards out of our deck. And it's rare. I like that one. That could actually pull our Cockatwice out really quick. Yeah, I like that. Sure. Most of the stuff we're going to want to cast, like, as soon as it comes out anyways. So we got a lot of troops. I mean, it would be unfortunate if, like, we had an open board state, we cast Infernal Professor and draw into, like, Murder or something. Because then we have to sit on it. But for the most part, we're going to cast the card that we're playing with it. For Mono Blood, Terrible Transfer seems pretty amazing for us. Shadow Grove Wish is pretty good, too. But that'll probably come back around to us. So, yeah, we'll just get the, get the removal with Terrible Transfer here. Yeah, we'll probably just play Zerid. Just play Mono Blood with Zerid. Dip in the diamond a little bit. Be nice if I could see like one shards of fate so I could like help with the fixing on the diamond, but I I shouldn't need it, I don't think. Probably just throw like a couple of couple of diamond cards in. A couple of diamond shards in rather to activate the cockatoise. Sorrow is pretty decent. Misfortune is okay, but I'll probably see it later. And Minthite Scrivener is not the best. So it looks like Sorrow here. We don't have a lot of like one drops in this deck either. I don't know. I'll probably end up playing the teapot anyways. Just because it's going to make everything so much cheaper. Like terrible transfer, for instance, cock it twice. It reverse, it reverse ramps me. Um, no diamond cards again. Yeah, the guy to my right's heavy in diamond for sure. Zach and and Josh was throwing a fit, of course, in the background. So sorry about all the noise. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my microphone for a little while.
really kind of want this Inquisition over the Wailing Banshee. I mean, I want the Wailing Banshee a lot, but I think I want the Inquisition more. Seems like a great reserves card to have. Yeah, I'm not really seeing any diamond cards right now, so like I'll be if I go into diamond, I'll be dipping in if anything. That's pretty bad for us. Um, so I'm just gonna counter draft this Mystic because that seems pretty bad for us. We basically have the whole deck anyways right now. Sub desk. It's another good reserves card that blow up the bolt paw wizard. Hex Baldo. Wish that hex chat wouldn't uh, flash at me whenever you guys talk. It's kind of annoying. I don't know why it does that. Totem, no. Rigid Buffalo. Uh, that's the best body here, but I really am not going to play any cards and diamond. I'm just probably going to... I don't know. We'll see what I end up doing with that whole situation. Um, I don't think anyone's in wild to take advantage of that honey cap, so I think I'll just take the biggest body here. Uh, same thing, I guess. Again, wild, I don't think... I'm not... Usually I should be afraid of these wild troops, but this late in the game, it's probably just not. Okay, I have to worry that much. Not gonna play that baby yeti anyways. Alright, so first things first, I think we're gonna need to figure out exactly how we're gonna shard these, uh, how we can shard the cockatoice to take the best advantage of it. And that will determine the rest of the deck, more or less. So let's go ahead and throw that guy in here and look at what we can do. We've got two Sockable Miner. So the Miners on Blood are Rage 1. This troop becomes one blocked, gets minus 1, minus 1. Okay. In Diamond, I get Swift Strike, which is pretty amazing. Then I also get, could have Life Drain, but I don't have a lot to get this double Diamond Life Drain, so... In Ruby, I could give him speed, and it can't be blocked except by other troops. Share a shard with it. So I'll probably just make him invasive, and we'll do this one, and we'll give him rage one. So we'll just make him evasive and rage one. If it would, yeah, it's, it's for some reason minor sockets are like this. Okay, come on. Give me the, I already got this rage one, now give me the... Or I got to get. I don't know why it does this. Rage one. Just kind of click on the other one here. No. This is so much fun. Okay, there's that. Let's see if I can put speed on this guy. Speed. All right, there it goes. And speed. All right. So. Or not speed, I wanted, can't be blocked. That's what I wanted. Can't be blocked by troops. So we will go into Ruby after all. So. That's the way you can check this. I think you can hover over these. Yeah, so. Rage 1, can't be blocked. And we go to the other one. Rage 1, can't be blocked. Alright, so that made that decision. So we actually don't need to go in the diamond now, so we can stick with our blood and ruby, maybe. Should probably select a champion here. Uh, what's this new guy? Nope. <laughs> That's not going to work for me. I mean, this guy is maybe because I have enough orcs, but um, I mean, I do have a lot of orcs I can play in here. But Polka might be better. The other thing I could do is just run the typical uh, Zared. We'll put Zared there for now. I'm not sure if we're going to stick with him. Do, 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 do. Uh, 
position. I'm really not sure how many of these Punishers I want to run. Let's see, if I run a ton of Orcs, though, I might be able to do that Orky thing. Do, uh... Gwen with orcs, but I'm thing is I'm mostly blood, so I probably want a blood champion, anyways. Yeah, we definitely want that shard. We'll get that in there. Sly Huntress seems okay. Let's see, we'll create solid. Feels like I just want to go tribal. Yeah, we're gonna run that guy because he helps gain a health. Okay, Infernal Professor. We're gonna run that. I'm gonna run the teapot just because. We'll see what it does. That rhymes. I'm not sure that I want to run this guy. I mean, I guess he seems pretty good with the teapot, so I can draw more cards if he actually gets damage in. If he gets damage in. Um, troop can't block. It's another work, though. And just run all of my punishers, I guess. That puts me at 24. I actually need one less card. Maybe one less Punisher. Maybe Spark Caster or something. I don't know. Punisher doesn't seem like overly amazing for the... If I run Sorrow, does it kill everything? No, it only kills this guy. I'd rather run Sorrow over that. I don't think I'm going to be tying up the board state to use that. Scrap Tech Brawler seems like you could help out to ramp me a little bit. Puts me at 25. I don't know. The 2-2 two, two for a 3 with double threshold just seems so bad. I kind of want to run Gwen with this deck though because he's... I want to run maybe with more Ruby cards and run Gwen so maybe get rid of Punishers. And run Gwen because he'll buff all of my um, orcs. Got a lot of orcs in here. I mean, buffing orcs, orcs front end seems pretty good. And it's very. I feel like there's a lot of toughness running around, anyways, right now. This also makes it look like I'm humans right off the bat, so someone's going to expect humans. But I'm orcs. <laughs> so that could confuse some people. I do need to make sure that I'm playing this properly though like for instance I can't buff anarchist or sly huntress stuff like that I could buff my caca twice as though if I had them in play I have no way of like gaining life I guess I could run the bullpaw wizard he reverts troops I don't think I need to though It should be okay, right? This doesn't feel like super powerful, it just feels okay. No, I feel like this teapot's not gonna really do a lot for me, but we'll see. It's like one of those, like, if I draw it in my opening hand and play it right away, it's great, but otherwise it's gonna be like, eh, it's a teapot. So, let's see, I only need one threshold for this, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes it not so bad to to use the champion power I guess because it's five but by the time I get there it'll be five so I feel like I could run one more dark spire punisher let's see what the curve looks like cost so yeah I mean I might be able to go down to 16 resources with this It'd be a little bit more risky or just play 41 cards Terrible Transfer gets a little bit worse in this deck because of the amount of ruby that I'm going to be running to get these things to, to hit the table. Yeah, double threshold on some of these ruby is going to be kind of annoying. Oh boy. Maybe something like that. Seven ruby, that seems okay. And then ten blood. Maybe that'll be alright, right? Infernal Professor could be really bad for this deck. Or he might... I mean, he makes it so I'm playing with less cards, basically. I don't know. I guess we'll just stick with this. Yeah, the Rage and the Swift Strike, but they're just not... I just don't have the diamond to 
to support it, you know, like, my diamond cards are, like, nothing good. Like, this Vanguard Egwene is probably, like, the best diamond card I have. It's pretty bad. I just don't see that happening, so... Just put the Rage, and he can't be blocked, make him, uh, hard to deal with, and, um... Throw, hopefully we'll get Blood Ore to throw on him or something. We'll see how this goes. I'm not feeling too confident about making it around two right now, which is fine. I kind of wanted a quick draft anyway. <laughs> He's actually running the humans, though. I am not. <laughs> I'll play first, of course, because I want to aggro him. Ah, uh, we'll keep this. So this is actually a pretty sick hand, because we can go Inquisition on our turn two. Turn three, we can play Punisher. Turn four, we can Scrap Tech Brawler uh, to get ready to play Cockatoy. So we can actually play our entire hand with what we've got, which is pretty cool. He either walked away from his computer, or he's really thinking hard about his hand right now. Okay. It's mulling to six, which is always good for me. That's the human player, the human deck, should be having that kind of problem. Anyway, so okay, I'm only a five, so that, that tells me this game may already have been won. Possibly. It's definitely looking bad for for him. Especially with the uh, turn two Inquisition, that's going to be uh, really back-breaking for him, I think. Yeah, I haven't played the VIP yet. I might play tomorrow or something. I'm not playing tonight. The next one is at like 9 o'clock, and I can't stay up past midnight. It's just not going to happen. Queen's Guard, that's really good. That's that's a good pickup for the uh, human deck. He's probably looking at my deck and he's like, why is he in blood? This just doesn't make any sense. The Queen's Guard could get big really fast if, as long as he just keeps dropping uh, shards. Obviously this, and then Inquisition. This is like the best time to, best time to have Inquisition is on turn two. I mean, there's, you know, you really can't, it doesn't get any better than that. All right, well, we're taking his bomb, Alowin. That's kind of backbreaking. We saw he had a ton of cards, so his Queen's Guard's going to get decently large, but he can't block Cockett twice. Um, and he's a pretty bad matchup versus uh, Dark Spire Punisher until he gets big enough uh, to cause a bad trade for me. So, not that I would swing into... I mean, obviously, I would take the trade if he gave it to me. Um, but he needs every card he can get. So. so this thing should be getting bigger, right? Oh, no, he has to have three threshold before he gets bigger. Okay, so it's going to be a while before that Queen's Guard starts pumping up. Yeah, long enough where... Let's see, I guess I play the Punisher next. I mean, I could play both the, the Brawler and the Punisher. If I draw a shard, I'll play Brawler into Punisher. Otherwise... Um, Otherwise, I, okay, so, yeah, we'll go Brawler and a Punisher here. So we get a free Brawler. We're just going to play him. Get our three resources back. Right, and then we play Punisher and pass the turn. Yep, can't get any better than that, really. And then cock it twice the following turn to start really pushing damage that he can't stop. Uh, nothing in his deck should be able to, to block this cock it twice. Uh, let's see, what could he do to get rid of it? He could, if he's in, if he's in Ruby, so he might have burn for it. We did pass a burn. There's, there's quite a few things he could do. Uh, we're not going to make, we're not going to block with our Kaka twice. Okay, another Enforcer. Okay, so we're at a place where we're going to buff all of our, um, all of our Orcs swing through with that Punisher. I'm going to sit on... Actually, you know, I'm just going to swing with the house here. So he won't want to block this. He said, I don't think he'll want to block it. And I get to play another Punisher here. So that's pretty good. It's turn four. I dealt five damage on turn four and draft. I mean, that's respectable. I mean, I, 
I did hear that people say that uh, orcs are counterhuman. I don't know that I believe it, but can, he can buff his guy. Yeah, of course, he's going to do that. And he'll mine collar here, sure, to debuff something in his hand or just get another body on the field. But again, both of those guys can't really stop Cocker twice. And um, with him, I know he's got basically all shards in hand. Can't really swing with the Scrap Tech Brawler now, but I can still swing with the Punishers. This Crazy Zealot's like a 6 4. He's like, the Crazy Zealot is actually a, uh, what's it called now? It's a, um, uh, it's a Tyrannosaurus Hex. It's as big as a Tyrannosaurus Hex now, which is pretty funny. Shouldn't make any trades here, I wouldn't expect. Because if he does, he discards his hand. Um, also, I, or he either discards his hand or I start drawing uh, more punishers to replace him and getting card advantage that way. I don't even think he can really swing now. Uh, next, he's, he's on a two turn with Kaka twice by itself. Queen's Guard just keeps getting bigger. If there is a humans deck that's tricolor humans in in standard, I'm thinking it's going to run Queen's Guard. It it is it seems like it's a great um, card to have in that deck. Valkyrie Warlord. Two or less can't be. Uh, I don't think I have anything two or less really. Yeah, it's just a vanilla body. All right, so we'll just swing with Cockatrice twice and the Punishers. If he kills a Punisher here again, it's really pretty good for me. He might have a kill card for my Cockatrice here. That's why he's looking to kill my Cockatrice, I think. Before I even swing in. It's his priority right now. Alright, so we're swinging. So, swinging in. He has to, yeah, probably. Okay, so he's going to make them some trades here. I'm perfectly fine with that. I suppose I could have swung with a Scrap Tech Brawler too, but... To get uber aggressive. So we'll see if I can draw some more Scrap, some more Dark Spire Punishers here. If I'm just going to make him discard cards randomly. Nope, just make him, make him discard his hand. Okay. That's fine too. We'll go ahead and throw out our Blood Craze Zealot, kind of sealing the deal here. He can't really attack into that, so he have to top deck something crazy. He needs to deal with Kaka twice, is what needs to happen here. Yeah, he needs to top deck his two point removal or his. If he's got that, or um, let's see, what's the other one? Where he deals power, damage equal to a troop's power. You could use that. Um, outlaw, five or less health. Okay, cause you have play damage equal. To, okay, that doesn't really do anything for him. Still doesn't stop our cocky twice, so it's pretty much game. It's got speed. He deals some damage to us. We really don't care about it. And then cocky twice deals five next turn. It's pretty much game there. He can't stop it. Yeah, that's one of the wonderful things about playing blood right now with uh, evasion, where they can only block it with blood troops or artifact troops. I mean, your artifact decks are typically going to be like dwarves, um, and those have really weak bodies to block something like this. A lot of times, um, not always. I mean, there are some pretty beefy robots out there, but for the most part, you're you're pretty safe swinging, putting a blood troop with evasion, where it can only be blocked by blood troops or Stuff like that. I can't. Yeah, I'm just gonna give him a whisper. Um, I mean, you're pretty safe <laughs> for the most part. Let's see. Versus humans, I don't know. I'm not even sure if there's anything else I really need to side in here. Maybe some more Punisher. Punisher actually seems better than that thing I had at the very end there. That seems pretty bad, actually, that last guy. Where was he? 
Uh, where are you? This is, no, not that guy, this guy. Yeah, it's Battle Cry, guys. I mean, I guess it works with Grave Nibbler. That's why I've got it in there in case, just in case that combo comes up. Teapot doesn't, again, seem to do a lot for me either. This has speed. I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to save and continue. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be good if I need to revert something, the bolt paw, but... I mean, I don't... I think you can... If I revert one troop, I think it does get rid of the champion's ability, his champion ability on one of them, but... You know, fight. All right. Yeah, there's that teapot. So we're going to see how good teapot is this game. Here we go. Keep hand. It costs us one every turn to use it, too, so... Already, I'm not a big fan of this teapot being in an, any type of deck, really, that's aggro. But I, people keep swearing by it, so we'll see what happens. Maybe if it drew me a card or something somehow. If I could, like, sacrifice it to draw a card after I feel like everything's, like, in my deck is, like, zero. But I guess we'll turn one teapot here and see what happens. Maybe teapot should be going into some of these ramp decks. I don't know. I still feel like it's, even then it's pretty bad. Interesting one. Yeah, I'm trying it out. It actually seems like a really bad call for this deck to play Teapot. It feels like if you're going to play this this card in in uh, in limited at all, you're probably going to want it with some sort of wild deck where things are really expensive, and especially because this is that you know this is kind of like ramp in reverse. So you would be able to uh, get some of that those big fat drops cheaper before you draw them. I don't know. I think I think I remember watching somebody else's stream and they were like, uh, "Who is function was in his channel and he goes, Teapot is a trap," and um, I'm pretty sure that it is too. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to do it in my opponent's end step is when I should do it. I'm just being lazy about it right now. I don't have anything to cast anyway. And it, all this does is show him I don't have a two-point removal card at quick action speed. Unfortunately, I didn't get uh, minus two, minus two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. It, I ought to get one card that's cheaper out of a 40-card deck. I mean, there's, I'm hitting five cards in 31 now. Next turn, I hit, you know, even less cards, so... Yeah, exactly. Like it's the teapot is like one where, like I was saying before, if I draw in my opening hand, it's amazing. But if not, then it's mm, useless. <laughs> yeah, because if I once I have five shards, I can cast and two threshold on each. I can cast everything in the deck. This guy is definitely just not worth it in this deck. I have to cast him because i got to put some pressure on my opponent. Uh, next turn we get to play Sly Huntress. Swinging with her little fox pet. Unless uh, our opponent plays something. Terrible transfer right now is looking pretty bad. It's only one point of removal. Although it is still instant speed. It'd be nice to draw blood so we can play this Neophyte. I'd rather play that than Sly Huntress. Oh, never mind. I'd rather play Sly Huntress if he's not playing anything. There's Infernal Professor. We could cast that. Now, I have things to play, so I'm just going to go ahead and play them. Alright, we're going to buff our Orc to buff all the rest of our Orcs. Yep, get those Orcs buffed. Buff Orcs. Uh, play Sly Huntress before combat so we can swing with her little pet. Not sure why she's buffed. She's not an orc. She's a human. That's really weird. That's something that's not right there. Hmm. Is it?
because of teapot? No. No, that doesn't... I'm not sure why she's buffed. Yeah, I mean, th yeah, this Warlord would be good, just not in this deck. Oh, Ranger. Oh, okay. All right, all right, I got gotcha. you. Oh, all right. Oh, he's going to shoot my guy. He's going to shoot my Fox Pet. Or, you know, he's going to shoot my Ranger. Never mind. Duh. I need some more blood so I can kill that thing with Terrible Transfer. Another blood would be nice. Especially to play this Neophyte. We might end up playing Infernal Professor here and see how bad that is for us. Although with Teapot, it should be... Whatever I draw, it should be pretty cheap, right? I guess I should Teapot first. And then Infernal Professor? That should be the play. Oh, never mind. I'll just play the Zealot. Just straight up play that Zealot. Um, I guess we'll try to make a trade here. We'll see if we'll trade his... Gwen for our Sly Huntress. And then second main phase, we can play our Blood Craze Zealot. I mean, I guess I could have swung in with Fox Pet and then killed it with ter killed his guy with Terrible Transfer, but that just seems like such a bad proposition to me. <laughs> All right, really big Blood Craze Zealot seems pretty good. Nice big Tyrannosaurus Hex Blood Craze Zealot, just because his power and toughness are the same as Tyrannosaurus Hex. No, no crush though. He's pretty big though. He's big, big body. It's like, it's like Big Boss. There's that diamond. All right. That's what's supposed to happen. Like, when someone's playing humans, like, it should be, like, turn six before they get all their threshold. Not the, none of this, like, turn two. I've got all my threshold stuff. Although that's very possible. So you can double block our Zealot to kill it here. That's unfortunate for us. Um, again, I'd like to be able to terrible transfer. Maybe the Fox Pet would be useful here. I don't know that I want to give up Blood Craze Zealot for a for this for these two though. It's a one for one trade. I, I want to have some some power. Um, yeah, let's try it. Let's go ahead and teapot Infernal Professor here to see if we can improve our board state a little bit. So far, we haven't seen a single card that's been teapotted yet. We got two resources to spend, maybe to to cast this card. Okay, it's a brutal enforcer. I guess that's not bad, sure. We can swing with that. And that'll that'll uh, maybe make him want to block that instead of our Blood Craze Zealot. Although we can't kill all of his stuff. I guess I'm just going to swing with the house here. We'll just push the damage. Because he should want to double block my Blood Craze Zealot here. And that, that should allow the rest of the damage through. That's five damage, I mean... You could get a positive trade here, but that's letting, like, a, that would be letting and then chump here and then let four damage through. That seems pretty bad to me. <laughs> Look, Teapot was relevant. <laughs> Somewhat. Sort of. So he's going to go ahead and chump block both of my guys, which is, seems pretty bad to me because he could have... I think he could have done a better job blocking here. Oh, there's there it is. All right, Ruby Aura. Okay. Well, that's where I would wish I had Terrible Transfer for his uh, Sly Huntress. Not that it would be able to kill it, but... Alright, well, now he's kind of taken over board state a bit. We've got our Neophyte, maybe. Maybe if we get another Blood Shard. We've got ten Blood Shards in the deck, so hopefully we'll draw it eventually. If anything, we can just keep using our Teapot, I guess. We can cast Terrible Transfer, but it doesn't do anything to any of the board state right now. He still probably won't want to swing in. Oh, there's that heroic outlaw. I wish I could deal with that. Flying and deals five damage to my face. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. He's very heroic, that outlaw. So he can go ahead and just swing away with this guy and not worry because these guys outlaw up. Although I just I just swing into that with my brutal guy and he wouldn't block, so I think he just sits. Oh, never mind. I'm wrong. Sure, take the four. I mean, that's pretty good, too. But, I mean, I guess he can chump with his fox pet. I just needed to draw more blood here, but I think he might have stabilized to the point now where he's going to take it. He should ta he should have this pretty pretty well in hand. I can Dark Spire Punisher to chump off his Sly Huntress. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's, that's all he's gonna end up doing. If I have... I need the two blood, I'm, I'm kind of low on blood here. Meanwhile, the tricolor sh shard deck is perfectly fine, as usual. Without any fixing, I might add. Well, that's kind of not great. Uh, I might as well teapot here just to get it out of the way. We'll go ahead and swing through with the this guy. He should now have a set up a chump blocker here. I'm in a pretty bad board state. Yeah, jump blocks to the fox pet. Not a big surprise there. Um, go ahead and run out this. We'll just play this guy because we need chump blocker. We need. I actually we'll we'll chump pl block with the fox anyways here. So. Hey, what's going on, golden saucer guy? We're just playing some limited here. I think my thing says constructed, but it's not. Stuck on one blood shard, of course. Losing to humans, of course. Yep, terrible transfer does nothing to that guy, too. Two blood! <laughs> if I could just top deck some blood for a little while. Nope, that doesn't help either. I'm pretty sure this is over at this point. You play a town crier this late in the game, I mean, there's not a lot I can do. With that many humans on the board. That's a lot of humans. Yeah. I haven't done my VIP tournament yet this weekend. I'll probably do it tomorrow sometime. Gets his human ability thing off again. He's at eight shards. I'm at five. I'm not sure what happened this game. I feel I feel very bad about this game. Orcs! <laughs> Oh, you orcs. Just not paying the bills right now, these orcs. Yeah, it looks like a round one type of a type of a limited play here. I mean, we still have a game three to go to, so maybe maybe it'll be better. I think I'm pulling teapot though, I don't I'm not really seeing it. Unless it can fix thresholds for me. I don't, I don't really see it being that much of a thing. I can't stop this guy in the air. There's nothing. I, if I have murder, if I top deck murder here, I could maybe hold out for a turn. No. Where were you? Oh my goodness. So. I can kill his sea priest. Uh, chump block here for two. Block this guy for four. Uh, six in the air, so I can survive a turn. All right, so we'll pass the turn, and we'll we'll see if we can top deck murder for his heroic outlaw the turn after that. So we'll just sit on his board state. If he um, casts anything, I have to respond with terrible transfer for his sea priest. Because I can't let his sea priest buff something else. Alright, he's going right into attacks. So he probably swings with the house here, anyways. Or just those two. Okay. That makes things better for me. So. I can double block here. He should kill my bone cracker. I should deal two to him, and then I can terrible transfer his guy. So that's going to be the play here. I get to keep my two two this way. We'll block there. Let's see how he deals damage. Um, should kill my brutal bone cracker. Yep. Oh, I forgot about... Uh, I needed to terrible transfer first. 
before the damage went through. I needed to do that during blockers. Yeah, big mistake there, obviously. Uh, let's see. I really just need to be able to kill that guy in the sky. Maybe misfortune here. Most of his stuff, stuff plays kind of slow, so misfortune seems okay. We're definitely getting rid of that teapot. It just doesn't do anything in this matchup. Uh, lots of punishers might be good, though, I think, too, though. I think that siding in the rest of my punishers would be okay. And we'll side out that other guy that's pretty much not really doing very much in here. The, uh, yeah, this warlord guy. That guy didn't do very much. Um, yeah, probably this nibbler, too. Let's get rid of that, sure. Uh, the rest of this stuff, maybe a bolt paw wizard. I just don't like it because there's not a lot I can sacrifice. That does a lot, you know, I don't have a lot of things to sacrifice with it. I mean, it's a 3-3 three, three body for 5, it just doesn't, I don't think it's going to do it for me. Yeah, teapot's bad. Play first. Yeah, teapot's definitely a trap. I'll, I'll have to agree with uh, Function on that one. Keep, tra keep hands. Yay, look, we got two blood shards this time. Yay. That's a good thing. And that's a good thing. We can actually turn to Scrap Tech Brawler to get to Furious Wrathbringer. That's pretty sick. At least I think it is. All my orcs across all zones get Rage 1. That'll be the first time I actually get to play that guy. That'll be really awesome. This is my pack 2. He got passed to me. That Furious Wrathbringer. I don't want to play the Infernal Pref Professor this early because there's no way I'd be able to play the, the follow-up card for it. So it's it's going to be tunnel this guy. And then, um, let's see, how many turns? Three turns? Three turns. I should be able to cast the Wrathbringer. So um, I may have to play, <laughs> play my Infernal Professor next turn uh, because I won't have any other plays. But that's going to be, yeah, that, that could really backfire. I really don't have a lot of one or two of orcs. I don't in here. You're right. Um, I'm playing like almost like a, a pretty slow, like mid-range aggro deck. Like my opponent is. He's playing humans. I'm playing orcs. So I'm trying to build up some sort of something. Dark Spire Enforcer would be good here. Or Inquisition. That'd be amazing. Sure. And snipe, snipe out that problematic card if he's got it. That, that flyer is probably the biggest problem for me. His flyer that deals 5 damage when he comes into play. Uh, that guy, spell shield, could be problematic. Yeah, looks like it's going to be that guy. So we'll just get rid of... At least he, he basically just has a bunch of shards in hand so and not very much else. So that's at least something good for me to see that he flooded pretty hard there. He's got a uh, ruby aura, so I do have to be aware of that when I'm attacking to keep that in mind. Uh, if I get up to five shards, I can terrible transfer in response to it, though. So, maybe that'll help. I will need another ruby in order to play this Wrathbringer. I may end up playing Sly Huntress instead once this Scrap Tech Brawler finally hits the table. Which would be unfortunate. Although, if I play Infernal Professor... If I get a really expensive car, Scrap Tech Brawler should help me cast it, so uh, maybe that'll work. All right, there we go. Sweet. So we go right into Sly Huntress, and then we'll get a Wrathbringer next turn, and then we'll be able to, hopefully, if we draw a resource, we can buff the Wrathbringer, and all of our orcs can get nice and big for us. So no matter what, we get to play Wrathbringer next turn, which is sweet. Swinging with that Fox Pet. Sly Huntress, Fox 2. Fox, Fox 1, 2. So I'm going to hold off on using this because I want to use it on my um, orcs. I thought it was 5. It's 4. Hmm. 
So yeah, we, we really want to use this on our orcs, not this human ranger. So orc warrior will be okay. That's fine. So he should have a play here. Four is kind of like his magic number. Yeah, there's a mine collar to make something cheaper. He has been drawing other cards. We know he's flooded, and he's also got the uh, Ruby Aura in hand, so he can stop both the Sly Huntress and the Fox Pet with that. And I can Terrible Transfer in response if I draw a resource. So I actually kind of want him to... I kind of want to attack into him, have him play the card, and then... All right, sweet. So we're going to hold off on all this stuff. We're going to see if we can get him to... we can trick him here. So we're going to swing with Sly Huntress and Scrap Tech Brawler and see if we can get value out of him playing the um, out of the Ruby Aura on his Mind Collar by Terrible Transferring in response to it. So what he should block here and then, and then Ruby Aura. Okay, so he's going to do that. He's just, he's just going to make the trade? If he makes the trade, that's fine. No, he's gonna do it. All right, sweet. So we get good value here. So we get basically like a two for one. We play terrible transfer to fizzle that ruby. Well, I think the ruby aura still targets. You still get it? No, uh, it fizzles it. Okay, sweet. So and then let's see here. So I can't play this anymore. I don't feel comfortable playing this yet, because I don't want to take any damage. Ah, oh, you know what? I can take some damage. How bad could it be, right? Let's find out. Let's find out how bad it could be. Okay, cock it twice. We'll take one, three points of damage? Something like that next turn. But playing the cock it twice next turn instead of Wrathbringer is fine. And then, you know, he can't, we know he can't stop this damage, and that's going to be game in like four turns by itself. Three turns. Three turns. Something like three turns. And we know he's flooded pretty hard, so as long as he just can't play troops for the rest of the game, we're in really great shape. Well, but you could say that about any game. So we'll take some damage from Cocket twice, so I take three here. Yeah, I took two. Oh, is it just two? I guess it's just two. Okay, so we'll play the Cocket twice here, because we don't want to take any more damage. Um, although we should have played that in our second main phase. And we'll go ahead and swing in. We're still waiting to play an orc so we can use our special ability on our guy so we can get value out of it. Um, we'll, have, we'll have Brutal Bonecracker to play maybe next turn or Furious Wrathbringer. Actually, this guy's got speed, so we'll play the Bonecracker next turn as long as he doesn't play any troops. But we're looking pretty good here on the board state. Plenty of troops. Our opponent has none. The Kaka twice is... Like, we. I haven't seen... Like, typically human decks don't have a lot of removal. If they do, it's in Ruby. He'll have, like, the two-point, like, burn, which we passed. Of course, he was probably sitting on the other side of the table, so something tells me it didn't make it to him. Okay, Cloud Titan I don't care about, because Kaka twice just swings right through it. And, in fact, I'm going to swing my Bonecracker into it, too. Um, and I can throw Blood Aura on my Kaka twice, actually. Um, I don't really need the life just yet, so I'm just gonna yeah, throw that guy out. We're gonna buff him so we can get some stuff on our orcs. And then we will swing through. Should I might just swing with a house here. That seems pretty advantageous. I should be able to swing with this. Oh, I don't have an orc. Um... No, I'll, I'll hold off. I'll just swing with the cockatrice here. I probably should have just blood aura the cockatrice, but oh well, live and learn. It's pretty sick if I, you know, having that combo in play. I didn't have an orc. I forgot I didn't have an orc in play. You need an orc for this guy to get speed. Oh well, should have played the wrathbringer. Get we get to play wrathbringer next turn though. That guy will get. Ridiculous, powerful, phenomenal cosmic powers. Okay, next turn we swing through with the house for sure. Because he's basically dead. Let's see. So we swing through. He can't stop this. Say he stops this. I blood aura for five. And then, yeah, that's that's game. So um, I really don't even want to play this. I just want to play the blood aura. 
least he's calling good games here. Yeah, good games. So, even without the Blood Aura, I'm pretty sure that I'm there. Because that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I guess that's one of the things to look at with human. Is that, like, there are other things that aren't humans, but they're, like, the same class, you know? Like, um, like we saw before with the uh, Sly Huntress, her being a ranger, and I buffed an orc ranger. We did see that before, so... I mean, that's something that you, uh... You know, you have to keep in mind. You know, the typical stuff you hear from your parents. I mean, yes, it's good to step away from the computer. Everything in moderation. Um, but... I don't know. It's definitely like outside looking in. There's there's definitely a misunderstanding f with between non gamers and gamers. Play first, obviously. Turn to Inquisition. I can't really ask for better than that. Dwarf deck this time, so we may have some trouble here. Keep hands. We really don't have artifact removal, even though we're in Ruby. We didn't draft any, so not that you typically highly draft that stuff, anyways. Uh, I think if I were to draft any artifact removal in Ruby, I would draft. Um, I would draft those uh, whatever they they're called. They're like the um, they're like goblins. The goblins that come into play. I think they're like two two goblins, and when they come into play, destroy target artifact. I draft those. Those are I've had those ruin my day completely um, playing in limited. And someone main decked them. I couldn't believe he main decked them. I mean, I guess it's. I mean, it's at at minimum it's a body, so it's pretty good. But for the cost, it's just. I think it's like four for like a two, three or something. All right, turn to Inquisition. Can't really complain about that. Let's see what kind of craziness our dwarf player drafted. What did he get? Shalu. All right, so he has Excavation Hulk. That could be. That's a really big. Oh. But he has this thing. Yeah, that we're getting rid of. That thing. He's he's not flooded. He's he's actually kind of starved right now. But we, yeah, we definitely don't want to do with Ogith. We can't deal with it at all in this deck. So where are you? Ogith, this guy. Make sure that we got him. Yeah, we can't deal with that. We're not... I don't, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to see it. Get that out of here. Yeah, can't you can't like this guy is so hard to deal with. Like I have one other answer in the deck to him, which is murder. And in thirty two cards, so far we haven't seen murder in two in three games now. So I'd rather just deal with him now. Um the rest of this stuff, like it's kind of expensive. He's got a lot of stuff that's gonna be tunneling and it's kinda slow, but at the same time we're also slow, so this may actually be his game. He's got that nice four four tunneler, which is just a nice body for two. He'll probably tunnel that guy right now. Yeah, he's tunneling the 4-4 right now. Very likely. So, in about three turns, I believe, that's going to be a 4-4 that we'll have to deal with. Kaka twice doesn't match up against that very well. Oh, there's that teapot. So, we'll go ahead and play our Battlecry Warlord here to try, put, try to push some damage for a little while. He's playing Bertram. He doesn't have any worker bots. He hasn't. He was starved on shards, so he may stay that way right now, which would be good for us, because then we just have to deal with this one four four. But if he starts drawing shards, then we're definitely in trouble. I mean, he did have a two drop. I think it was Ruby. Yeah, it was Ruby for. Uh, it was the uh, deal one point of damage guy. So we get to play Bonecracker next turn. That's pretty sick. The Lannisters. This is another one. Yeah, that's right. I forget what the other tunneling troop was. And some construction plans. Okay. Four turns for the robot? I don't know. If it's, I, th I feel like it's three. Most of the time it's like three. Four turns is a long time on a tunnel. 
but I mean we're doing really good because we're gonna have seven damage coming into his face that he well he'll probably no he can't really chump block that guy so we got seven seven damage he'll chump block the some of it here uh, but yeah we want to get this guy moving fast here he's moving fast yeah teapot's definitely coming out it's just not worth it it's just not a card that's worth having in the deck. I mean, it's a lot harder to get Threshold than it is to get Shards, it seems, to play things. Yeah, Bowcracker's... The back end on him is crazy good, especially with the... Uh, I mean, he's got that, that Rage in front. I mean, it's amazing. If I get to draw a Wrathbringer, this deck could get really crazy, you know? But that, yeah, that three back end is going to make him really a, a tough cookie to deal with for a little while, at least. Um, yeah, Chump Block, the 4-2. Maybe he's... Oh, he's... No, he can't deal with him. He just, he's just chumping here. Okay, yep, gets his guy. Saving himself as much damage as possible. I guess the no, even with the Sly Huntress, her her wolf, her fox pet is three. So it doesn't like Warlord doesn't even do anything with that, so again, he probably isn't the best choice for this deck. Um it might have been better to just play all five of my Dark Spire Punishers, even though they're just two twos and he's a three two. One of these times, I'm gonna I'm gonna play that um, Shin here and give it unblockable though with that guy with the Warlord. It'll come just in just just right. It'll just happen just like that. Sly Huntress is more aggro. Let's see, I'm trying to remember if I buffed the Warlord. I think I did, which means Sly Huntress should also be buffed. Yeah, she is. So, I mean, that works out. At least that works out. That makes him well worth it. <laughs> well, obvious answers are Bonecracker for more speed damage here. It's pretty ridiculous. That's That's pretty bad for my opponent to have to deal with here. That's wow. I mean, he this guy's this guy's coming next turn, I think. So I mean, he'll have to. I'll have to make a trade here. He'll trade my big five. My my guy will be six three at that point. But that's a lot of damage. Some some orkity orc damage. Right into the face. We draw a ruby. I mean, Wrathbringer, and they get even bigger. Down to three. If I had like life siphon or something, he's definitely within life siphon range. <laughs> Although that's a rare, and I didn't draft it. But uh, you know, if it was there, I don't know. He's going to have enough of blockers. He has to block every troop I have in play here. Subterranean spy. Okay. You can see cards in opposing champion's hand. Okay, so he could see all my cards in my hand. He could see that I have this teapot I've been sitting on. Shield bot. Okay, that should help. He can trade the shield bot for this, and then that guy gets buffed. Um, that guy will trade for one of my guys. But again, he can't block all of my guys, so I don't... I think that's it. Especially if I play Sly Huntress here. Uh, I can't play the Kaka twice. So we'll go ahead and play Sly Huntress so we can get some more damage in with her Fox Pet. Swing with the house. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't think he had it. That was just a crazy aggro there. To push through like that. Again, I look like humans right off the bat, so that can throw people too, which is definitely a positive thing. Uh, I definitely want to discard that card. So we're going to throw Misfortune in again. We're going to get rid of the teapot. Um, that card is could really ruin my day if he ends up casting it. 
Let's see, what else? I don't think I need Bolt Paw. Dark Spire Punisher seems really good in this matchup, too. Again. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff is just really fast. Um, maybe I just get rid of Infernal Professor. Sorrow does that do? Yeah, that could clear out his board with what he's got. Terrible transfers, removal. Murder is still good in this deck, even though it's just a one of. I think I'm gonna get rid of this guy, this anarchist. That guy seems really clunky to be playing. I'm gonna keep playing this guy anyways, just because. Just because he's in work, that's decent. I don't know if I want to play this Grave Nibbler, though. I think I want to just keep being really fast. So, I'm going to pull the Grave Nibbler. And we'll save and continue. I mean, the Grave Nibbler is fast, but he's he kind of wants me to kill things. And some of the stuff in his deck is going to be kind of hard to kill. He's only a 4-4 matching up against his stuff. That's kind of like a 4-4 range anyways. If, if I kill something, it's very situational. I think I just want him to, to discard a lot of cards, which means play a lot of Dark Spire Punisher here. <laughs> Next time I draft or get Ridge Raiders. I'm trying to remember if I saw any Ridge Raiders right now. I can't even remember if I saw any. Murder. Mm, ugh, a slow hand. We'll stick with it, though. We're up a game. And uh, we just need to draw into that one ruby shard. We have the one thing that will help fix us. We just need to draw shards, so I think we'll be okay. We can play shards for a couple turns. We'll keep this. This may not be our game. Especially if he drops his 5 drop. But uh, we'll see. Oh, uh, we do have murder for his big guy. That's what we have. Yeah, if he drops his big five drop, we've got murder for it. So that's the main thing, I think. Oh, look at that. Turn two Inquisition. Sure. Maybe I'll just Inquisition it out again. Isn't Ridge Raider like the 1-1 one, one that gets becomes like a 2-2 two, two if you uh, have another orc in play? I mean, that's good, but it's just basically a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, I feel like I'm, I have a lot more power with what I've got. I think that's him. I, I picked up two Kaka twice in here, dude. <laughs> and it can't be stopped. I mean, in this deck, at least Orcs have a chance of stopping it with some of their uh, stuff, but it's really hard to stop Kaka twice. I need to draw resources, though. Uh, otherwise, this game's not going to go anywhere. Draw one resource would be nice. Let's see. So, Mortar Strike, Construction Foreman, Time Wave... Put two targets. I don't really care about time wave that much. I've got a lot of stuff. Probably the construction foreman. Water strike, construction foreman. I just want to get rid of his, his blockers, really, I think. So mortar strike is good to deal with my stuff, but um, and it does deal with everything in my deck, like Cockatwice. I just have to be careful now about Blood Aura. I just want to get rid of more troops on his end that can block me. So I can hopefully aggro once I draw some of my troops. If I draw any. So, kind of unfortunate that he didn't have his massive drop for me to snipe out again. But I have murder for it, in case it shows up, rears its ugly head. That big, whatever it is, 7-6 blocker that mills my deck every turn. Taskmaster I can't play. So it looks like we're just passing the turns here. We really need to draw a resource here, otherwise this is going to be a not fun game. Well, for me it won't. Sure, he'll be having fun. Need a fight can possibly even just mill out that big 7-6 guy. Gave me some life. Shield bot, okay. 
and that blocks my cockatoice as well. Maybe I should just side out the cockatoice. It seems like it wouldn't be the greatest against this deck. And then blood, I guess I can play my neophyte here. Yeah, we'll just go and play that guy. So I got blockers now for his 1-2-2 one, one, two, two shield bot. And I can start milling. Gaining some life. Need Ruby. Yeah, like this thing. I guess it's not a big deal that I don't have double Ruby to make this guy not blockable by stuff because most of he has the he has blockers for it. Swings. Let's see. Do I think he has a buff? I don't really think so. I think he's just doing this for the uh, whatever. So he might have a buff here. You might have burn for my guy, which is actually he's got mortar strike. So he's gonna mortar strike my guy, which is great. I'd rather he mortar strike this guy than my cocka twice. That's fine. I am perfectly fine with that. Mortar strike that guy all day. All day. So I make cocka twice a lot better now because I can blood aura it. Uh, no real reason to cast Sorrow just yet. Not until he has like a ton of worker bots in play. Still looking for that Ruby. We actually need double Ruby to get cocked twice, like, you know, where we want him to be. Yeah, perfectly fine with that Mortar Strike there. Play your big guy. Yeah, play a bunch of worker bots that I can sorrow. Yay. That's fun. Play construction foreman, turning a worker bot into a thing, which I can't sorrow now. Now that's unfortunate. So he gets a war war bot here. Yeah. Yep. He should have put it on this one, because then he could attack with it, I think. I think he could have attacked with uh, this one if he had done it. Oh, he did do it to the right one. Okay. Alright, well, can't murder either one of them anyways, so take five. Looking pretty bad for me. If I need to top deck some shards here to do something. Feel that combat damage. So do I sorrow here if I don't have anything else to do? Probably. Uh, if I had sorrowed the turn before... It wouldn't. It would have been the same, same thing. Would have happened. Okay, so I can go Taskmaster here to get my orcs buffed. I don't really want to. We'll just throw out the cock twice here. It doesn't block anything except for his foreman. So we're gonna take another five. But then we can swing back for a lot with our blood aura up, and that'll be good. So that seems pretty good to me. So we'll see. This is only gives it to the front end, and the cocket twice keeps getting bigger anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. We'll just. Yeah. There's no reason to use the uh, champion power on the cocket twice here. So next turn we'll be swinging in and then throw the blood aura on the cocket twice. Should make him think twice about swinging with our, his war bot because he needs a blocker for cocky twice. Then, so this may actually hold his his board state. He should swing with both. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's fine with me because he he figures he's got a blocker with the worker bot. He just doesn't know why blood Laura to start getting some life back. Blood Aura and still play my Taskmaster and then get my buff on the Taskmaster to trade Taskmaster for Warbot if he swings. Mm, or play Scrap Tech Brawler and Blood Aura. Alright, I'm going to play the free Scrap Tech Brawler before combat. And um, that way I can 
I can play the Blood Aura and the Taskmaster after combat. Otherwise, if I play the Blood Aura without playing Scrap Tech Brawler, then I can't do. I, I don't get the free body. So, we're just gonna play him here pre combat. Sorrow is not quick action, it's basic action speed. I could sorrow to swing, but I'd rather just save it here, I think. Let's see, pass prior, we'll go to blockers, we'll blood aura and during blockers. So it should still get the blood aura. Hmm. Should still get it. Didn't get it. Okay, well that fizzled. Okay. So, sorrow here. can tunnel this guy, that seems okay, because then I can get him later. Taskmaster can trade here. I feel like I need something to trade this thing. So we're just going to play the Taskmaster to make a trade with the shield bot. I need to buff all my orcs here anyways. Actually, I'll trade Taskmaster with his Warbot and take two if he swings. I don't think he will here, though. He might. He's kind of like running out of cards. Meanwhile, I am not seeing a shortage of card cards. Should have remembered that he had that time wave, though, but... Trade. I'm making that trade. So I got lots of guys. Alright. Let's see. Do I take the positive number here by just killing this guy? I think I just want to make the trade. I can I could take three. I'd rather not take six. Let's just make this trade here. He could have uh whatever it is. The uh, Ruby Aura. If so, I'd rather. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually probably rather have it on the Foreman, but. That's fine. I can. I'm still not in a horrible spot. Scrap Tech Brawler will give me three when I play him. I can Sorrow here, anyways. So, like, Sorrow, play Scrap Tech Brawler, murder the other guy, maybe. I definitely want a Sorrow here. I just want to clear up two of these guys. Yeah, I'm going to play the Brawler. So now have murder open in case he plays something during his turn. I mean, the cock twice is good again, but it doesn't really do a ton right now. Whereas the brawler will trade with this guy. And the other guy I can murder if I want to during his end step. So we can make a trade and then murder. And then play cock twice, putting us in position to uh, swing through with a lot of damage for a while. Although I would rather save the murder for that big fat drop that he may draw into. So we'll see. Bot bunker. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> well, I may have to draw trade a cocket twice for the robot then, for his war bot. That's uh, and then his shield bot gets bigger. Oh, I'm gonna have to take this too. 
That's not good. Alright, well, it looks like I'm taking two here. I can't make this trade in good conscience right now. Looks like we might be going to game three here. Bomb smithing my guy, I guess. Not that it's really doing very much there. Sly Huntress, I guess, for the blockers. Sure. drawing all those orcs I was seeing in the last game, that's for sure. Can't swing in. We're at five life, obvious. Do -do -do -do. So if he swings, I block Sly Huntress and Scrap Tech Brawler to Warbot. Take two, three, block Fox Pet to Bombsmith or Subterranean Saboteur, depending on what he swings. Okay, swinging with the house here, so yeah, we'll just do that. So we'll do that, and that, and that, and take three. Going down to two, so if he has burn, he wins here. I, don't, I can't murder anything at this point in the game. Because I don't have the three resources to do so. Otherwise I'd murder his saboteur to keep myself above water a little bit higher. Okay, and crackling bolt for the win, alright. All right, well, game three. Did not really see enough Dark Spire stuff, just saying. So Kaka twice we found out was really bad in that matchup, so we're definitely siding those back out. I think I'm going to put this guy back in, or maybe I can put... He can't block the Grave Nibbler, maybe put that back in, the, that guy instead. Sure, that seems fine. this guy. Something a little bit quicker. The thing is, I'm probably never going to play this guy on turn two. That's my biggest problem with him. Which is when you're going to want to play him, right? Alright, we'll see what happens. What's going on, Nero? I'm in round two of this draft. With this orc -y -y orc deck. We're playing Gwain, so we look like humans, but we're really orcs. We use Gwain to buff all of our orcs. Lots of orcs. Didn't see any Dark Spire Punisher. Five in the deck. Didn't see any of them last last game. Yeah, we're aggro yeah, we're trying to. We're trying. I probably should have in retrospect I probably should have cast Sorrow a lot earlier, probably. Like once it is that he had two things on the board I could sh shut down with it. Last game. It's gonna be a little bit more clunky now that we've got Cunning Skull caster in the game. But uh hopefully it'll be alright. Also, we didn't use our champion ability until way late in the game. It really does feel like, though, like Cocky Twice is just, it could be really good, but at the most, most of the time it was just really bad in that matchup. Especially after he bounced it really hard. So, play first, of course. And, looks good, looks good. Alright, sweet. We've got the murder to deal with that big fat thing, and then, uh, which I was holding like the whole game last time. I also probably could have used my murder earlier, but really just did not want to deal with that big blocker that mills. I wonder if he sided it out at this point. So we'll open up blood, make him think all we have is blood here. Let's see. So we get a turn three Punisher and maybe a turn five Wrathbringer to buff all of our dudes and then we'll have Gwaim will buff all of our orcs. So maybe we'll just keep drawing punishers or something or making them discard. 
cards. Infusion device. Yeah, you would think it's only good if we had Swift Strike, but it depends. Like, if he's slow, which he has, which he was, um, that front end, like, it just, as long as I'm pushing it through and getting the damage in, it doesn't matter if, if I have Swift Strike or not. Hmm. So I guess we will, we've got some tunneling we can do here, so we'll do that. Scrap Tech Brawler, so good. <laughs> he's so good for this deck. He'll allow me to cast my Wrathbringer, possibly. Well, I need double Ruby, so never mind. If I draw a Ruby, then I can cast him. He'd also let me uh, cast the Cocka twice, but we pulled those out. It may have been better, actually, instead of playing the Scrap Tech Brawler, to have waited a turn and played both him and the Punisher in the same turn. Oh, wow, he's going to turn an infusion device into a warbot. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good tech there. And the warbot gets to swing because it was already in play. Pretty nice. That's that's pretty good. I have to, I have to say I respect that. Yeah, the two troops on this next turn would have been better, for sure. So, play mistake there, for sure. I agree. Play mistakes. So, we'll go and do that. If he swings, we, we block, because discarding a card is good, drawing more punishers, and thinning our deck is good. Both those things are uh, perfectly fine at this stage in the game. Actually, I might just wait a turn, take the three, and then have two punishers up. So I can actually get some value. That might be better. Yeah, I'll probably wait. I'll take the three. Plus, I need something to buff anyways. And actually, he'll one for one trade him next turn. So yeah, we'll wait. We'll take three here. We can block his construction foreman. He's got his... He's going to have a 2-1 flyer here pretty soon, though. Which we cannot murder. So looking pretty good for the dwarf player. Yeah, it would definitely have been better to have been able to double block the the warbot, and he would have killed this, the brawler. But still, it's Ruby Shark, Crackling Bolt, Bombsmith, Foreman, Construction Plans. I guess he gets to look. He gets the Construction Plans. So he's got Construction Plans, War Hulk. That's really bad for me. I'd like to see Sorrow here. Sorrow would be good. Especially if he plays this thing, that would be amazing. To a really good swing for me to have Sorrow available. He's gonna probably try to pump up the Warbot first, though. At this point, with two, those two options, take three. Obviously, we'll swing back with our Punisher next turn. Play a Punisher, swing with the Punisher. He's punishing all kinds of people. first. Taskmaster, buff Taskmaster, swing. That seems alright. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll go Taskmaster, buff Taskmaster, swing for six. And just start racing. He has a double block here, which means he'll have less uh, stuff to to finish his plans with. Next turn, I can actually play Punisher and swing through the Punisher, and Brawler should be able to swing all in the same turn. So, feeling pretty good about this. 
Especially if I get a Sorrow. If I top deck Sorrow, that would be amazing. Given the board state. This guy would be really good too, if I can... Okay. He's got a lot of plans, so... Caught up to his damage output. Swing three and two. Wow, he's gonna just keep pushing. All right, that's fine. Five. Murder sitting here, not doing very much in my hand. We got seven resources. If we top deck a ruby here, nope. We would have been able to play both the Wrath Bringer and, um, yeah. So the question is, do I kill the foreman here? I think I do. Go ahead and murder the foreman and just push all the damage through. I think that's what I do here. Just and that way he can't he can't block any. He can't get positive uh, removal out of any of my guys this way. It's unfortunate that I have to do this, but um, I think getting the damage through is pretty important right now. I mean, that's a lot of damage. Especially if I can play, if I top deck the Ruby next turn to get Wrathbringer to swing. He's swinging for five. We're taking. We'll go down to four. War Hulk is just way too slow right now for him. Yeah, he has to chump block here. I think he actually. We're gonna make him stay on his board state too. Yeah. Deal five to the face. If he can deal five to the face, then I might be in trouble. But he still has to exhaust these guys to get there, you know? So I don't see that as being a problem, really. Especially if I draw Ruby to, to play this Furious Wrathbringer, it's definitely over next turn, I think. Because he can block, he can one for one each one of these guys. Uh, well, then I'm not worried about that. Yeah, so look, another Punisher, Taskmaster, the Punisher. He should be, he should have, like, blocked my Taskmaster, if anything. Swing away with the house here. Because the Taskmaster just keeps giving things uh, speed. I mean, I, I'm surprised he hasn't blocked this guy yet. Uh, he has to block two of my three. He probably blocks here and here. Okay, so we'll deal... What is that? Five. If I draw another uh, Dark Spire Punisher, that'd be good. Obviously. So we lose our Dark Spire guys, but that's fine because it'll probably make him. It could make him discard his whole hand, which would be good. Yeah, down to one. Draw a discard and another Punisher into the hand. Accept. So that's just more Punisher, more punishment next next turn. So yes, this thing can two target troop. Yeah, that's not gonna be good enough. I don't I think I got him. Especially if I again draw a ruby here for this guy, for Wrathbringer. See what he top decked here. If he has he may have removal. If he's got removal, this could go another turn. Okay. Alright, well, round three with the works. There. I'm guessing you're also a streamer. I haven't met you yet, Steel. 
So if you are, you're always welcome to uh, stop by the show, or any of you else, that, uh, any of you other people that are Hex content producers, you're always welcome to come on Deck Building with the Squire. I should not have put this in here at all. That thing just keeps coming out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, we'll keep this. We can scrap Tech Brawler to get that other resource, so we'll go ahead and teapot on turn one. But yeah, I run a show that will be resuming the first week of January next year, 2015. Yeah, the Swift Strike and Lethal is definitely better on the uh, Cockatwice. I just couldn't go into Diamond. I didn't get any no enough Diamond to support it, but Cockatwice is still a really good troop to begin with, so um, it's not that much of a big deal. So it looks like I'm going to want a Scrap Tech Brawler, bury my Scrap Tech Brawler. Oh, maybe not. Um, let's go ahead and Inquisition here. Inquisition. Love it. It's Inquisition. What does he have in his hand? I'm going to cast some Inquisition. He's also playing Blood, obviously, like I am. Some Punisher, Jags. I think we're getting rid of Jags. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. I could murder him, but let's just deal with him right there. That seems like the best thing to do. Next turn we get to play Brawler and Warlord. Although that doesn't really do very much for us, but... Oh well. Teapot to victory. Looks like he's burying... I forget what he had in his hand. I should have written it down. You should do that. If you're a good player, you'll do that. I am sometimes an okay player. Ooh. Uh, I really want to play this Cockatwice, but I think he can block it because he's also blood anyways, so maybe it's not that great. Uh, uh, pay now, pay later. See, the thing is, I can bury this to get to the cockatrice. twice. I'm not looking at any shards. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bury this. We're going to tunnel this, because I want to be able to play that cockatrice, twice, and then we'll just teapot here and pass the turn. So we could have gotten offensive there, but um, I think I want to go for a, much, a, a little bit of a longer game here, because cockatrice twice, again, can get out of control, and there's a chance I wouldn't be able to play it. That's, that's a tough decision, though. It really... It, I wouldn't shame anyone for making the call on this guy. Of course, he has nothing to buff here, so maybe that should be an easier call, but I don't have a lot of two drops in the deck to begin with that he buffs. Like, this guy played him. He didn't buff anything either. So, you know, it's whatever. Honestly. Uh, I guess I'll play mine. I can't buff him because I don't have four shards. Yeah, playing my guy, sure. If he swings in, do I take it? I probably do. And just swing back. Yeah, Burrow Bunny, sure, it's a 4 1. Yeah, Burrow Bunny seems pretty bad. I mean, it's just a, it's a trade most of the time most things. Shadow Grove Witch is bad. Oh, don't hit my cockatrice. twice. No. Hit Neophyte. Hit Neophyte. No! 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 <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's too bad. Um, let's see. I'll trade for the. I guess I'll make this trade. The other trade's easier to make. We'll make this trade. And yeah. I guess I'll play my neophyte, which will block his shadow grove witch for a long time. And yeah, cock it twice. Useless now. <laughs> Infernal Professor, maybe? Yeah, let's go ahead and Infernal Professor here. We aren't casting anything this turn anyways. 
we end up with a terrible transfer. Well, that's pretty bad. Uh, huh. So I guess I'll teapot <laughs> and play that terrible transfer next turn to kill his banner bunny. <laughs> his bunny's gonna get terrible transferred, and I'll get two life out of the deal. Before that, though, I'll take two, and I'm taking six here, so pretty bad spot right now. Ah, oh, Scrap Tech Brawler, you're going to make it so I can cast this Kaka twice, but nobody will want to cast him anymore. <laughs> I'll end up using you to cast Neophyte instead. How did this guy get so big? What just happened? How did that guy get big? Is it because this guy died? Enters play. No, that doesn't do it. Why is this guy so big? I just missed something. I missed something important. I missed something very important. Somehow his Shadow Grove Witch got a 5 front end, and I'm not sure how that just happened. But it just did. <laughs> oh, this is so bad right now. Look at all the resources I have. Um. Hmm. So I can murder the Shadow Grove Witch. Terrible transfer and murder. I can do both those things on his turn. Trade there. That costs five. I'll have seven. Uh, I can't cast this guy. That's what that means. I can use my teapot at the end of his turn. So it looks like we're passing the turn here. So yeah, we'll just pass the turn here. Oh, he oh he used his champion power on it. Oh, duh. That's where it came from. Thank you. I knew it came from somewhere. I was just not paying attention, as per the normal. I'm already happy. I mean, I need three packs on this draft, so. So, let's see what the, the swings here. He's happy. Maybe he's, he'll be less happy now. Murder, murder that guy. At least murder can kill the blood troops. And make a trade. Make a trade and then teapot in his end in his end step. Actually I'll teapot right now, why not? We don't we don't have anything else to do anyway, so might as well teapot it up. So worthless. If you do not play me on turn two, I will not do anything for you. I am Teapot. Turn one or turn two. Optimally turn one. Oh, look, a Mentor of Flames. Well, that's some nice card advantage for him. Oh, and a Dark Spire Priestess. That's some nice card advantage for him. So I can play my Neophyte block Priestess if he attacks with otherwise I'm blocking Mentor, so I'm okay. I'm not great. I can't really... I, I want to save that. I want to save Gwen for uh, Orcs, so I really can't buff the Neophyte. Might as well use this now. It's not like I'm going to cast anything for one resource anyways. Pass the turn. Back to my buddy, Mr. Rook. Yeah, Kaka twice is perfectly fine to be discarded now, so this is just basically discard fodder at this point. Swings that way, I will go ahead and block the priestess. Take three. And next turn I can Oh, Ridge Raider, okay. Ridge Raider. I need a top deck spells here. I really need some spells or troops or something. That is not a spell or a troop. Alright, so this is pretty bad. <laughs> We're going to do this so we can actually kill his Ridge Raider now. And we will teapot because we don't have anything else to do. And I'm just going to hold on to Kaka twice in case I need to discard something and I'm holding on to something else. 
So we'll block the Ridge Raider, and then we can gain one life. So we're net taking two, two damage a turn. Did I already lose the first round? I don't even remember. That's how bad it is. Can't block Mentor of Flames, because then he just burns my guy. So we'll block here. Block. Use my, my thing. Maybe. Use it now. There we go. On the stack. Discard. Don't gain any life, because I didn't discard a whatever. And yeah, okay. And a banner bunny. Wow. Well. Hmm. So how dead am I when Mentor dies? Uh, pretty dead. Pretty much dead. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, so again, good game. <laughs> let's, let's not waste any time here. Let's go to game two here and get rid of that stupid teapot. Alright. Yeah, we were in, we were in game one because I didn't slide out tight teapot. Of course, now I get to make a triumphant comeback, maybe. Hopefully. Alright, so first things first, teapot out. Uh, playing against aggro. Inquisition's good. Infernal Professor, maybe not so much. Uh, Dark Spire guy, maybe better. As he... Yeah, let's see. Let's put the Ruby stuff. There we go. Yeah, probably put some Punisher in there. Misfortune, probably not the best here. He's playing Burrow Bunny. I don't really see that as being a thing. Let's see. What else? What else? The Cockat Twice, I still want in here, I think. Sorrow is definitely is crazy good in this matchup. Mm, nibbler, what else? What else? Terrible transfer. I definitely want that. Infernal Professor. What else do I not want in here? It's probably going to be this guy just because he's hard to cast. And he's not an orc. Just this psychotic guy. And I don't. My guy's aggroing, so I don't want him to draw more aggro. So yeah, psychotic guy. Save and continue. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. That's as best that's as good as I can do. Yeah, the Dark Spires is definitely. Well, the Cockatwice is bad, but he isn't two shards, so there's a chance it could No, that's not what I want to see here. No <laughs> We're down. we're drawn again. This is this is like the story of last last weekends or two weekends or whatever the the draft where I needed stuff. Uh, I hate going down further than this. I need to draw one shard and I'll be okay. All right, we'll keep this. This is pretty bad though. I think I lost. I think I lost here. He's at seven. I'm at six. I have two shards in hand. I'm pretty sure this is Rook's game at this point. This looks really bad. I need to draw a blood so I can play the Punisher. That's what needs to happen. And then, yeah, I need to just draw shards here for like the next three turns, and then after that just draw spells, and that would be perfectly fine. So, I mean, the Gwen is... I've got so many orcs that I felt like Gwen was better for me. Um, Zared is good, but like... I mean, I guess this is the one time when Zared would have actually done something, but I've got Sorrow, so we'll see. You saw the deck. If you saw the draft, I won my deck, man. Never say never. Oh, gosh. It's not looking good. We need to draw a resource here. Everyone... Everyone think. Think about blood. Blood resources right now. Everyone. Okay, I'll take it. We will. That is good. Better than nothing. I will take that. That's... I. Okay, but next time, everyone needs to think harder about blood resources. We really need a blood resource. A regular resource would be okay, because then we can play Sly Huntress, but... Mostly blood resources. That's what we want to see here. Interesting not to see... Oh, there's that Jags. Uh, huh. Well. Well, we got him. We got rid of him last time, but not so much this time. I think that might be game. 
Yeah, you guys weren't thinking hard enough about blood resources. I can feel it. You guys are not even... You guys aren't even paying attention. Not even paying attention. Alright. Well, yep. And uh, Burrow Bunny. Now he's got double damage. Burrow Bunny. And that's ridiculous. Although I can sorrow it, at least. Play another Burrow Bunny. He's got... Okay, well, that doesn't help. Maybe he'll miss. Hit the sorrow. Even if he hits Dark Spire Punisher, it's not that bad. Okay, Blood Craze Zealot. Okay, at least he's still alive. I really wanted him to play another Burrow Bunny for me to kill, but... Of course, Shadow Grove Witch now has double damage as well. Yep, that's that's pretty good. I think this is going to be it for me. I, I don't have Extinction in the deck, you know? <laughs> Um, and I don't think that would work here anyways, because I would need to draw two cards. Okay, there's the blood that we were looking for the other day, or the other minute, rather. We can play the Punisher and play the Sorrow, which is probably going to be the play here, so we can at least block Jags. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. That's fine. At least I can block Jags. He can't attack with Jags. Now, get all of my Orcs powered up. Power up the orcs. Make a trade here, maybe? Or he swings with witch. I take four. Ugh. Yucky. That's not good. I don't want to see that. Yeah, that's definitely not good. Taking four here. Or taking ten here. I have to now I have to block hit the uh, the witch. Ah, uh, really? That's just... That is the play, so there's nothing to be mad about, really. I mean, uh, I can't take 10 and survive, so I have to block that guy instead of Jags. I'm just too far behind at this point. Yeah, I have this. had to stop that Jags a lot earlier and just did not do it. Did not draw the stuff to do it. Hey, there you are, Inquisition. Would have liked to see you on turn two. A little late for you. Um... Hmm. I think I lose no matter what I play here, so it's pretty much good games. So we're going to play our Sly Huntress, and good games our opponent, let him hit us in the face for lethal here, and uh, awe, sit in awe and wonder of the Jags deck that decided to, yeah, just go nuts. The nuts Jags deck. <laughs> Blood Aura on Jags was the play. <laughs> I don't think that that would work. I think it would actually target him. It's it gives it life drain, and life drain goes to the 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 owner of the the, the troop, not me. Even though that's how it works in Magic, it doesn't work that way on me. All right, I'm taking down that Jags out of spite. Yeah, that's right, Jags. Eat it. Alright, well, three shards, or some shards of fate booster packs. A decent draft. I think I got three rares out of it, so can't complain too much.